Thank you very much for being with us. Um, please tell me your name and your affiliation. Hi, I'm Angelo Dali. I'm the CEO of Omni and uh, an artificial intelligence company. What does Omni do and what makes it unique? Well, we work on uh, solving the problem of explainable AI. We're working on uh, basically the problem with current technology is that it gives you an answer, but it doesn't give you the explanation of how it actually got to that answer. So, for example, if you are in medical diagnosis, you get a diagnosis, you say, you know, like you have this problem, if it's looking at an X-ray or an MRI, but it doesn't tell you how it actually got to that diagnosis. So we're researching ways into how that answer could actually be supported by the decision steps, how it got to that answer, how and why. Hopefully you are doing more than just researching since you are a startup, so you must have uh, some idea of how to address that issue. What is your solution? I mean, our solution, we've been researching and doing, you know, looking at different uh, research that maybe has been overlooked in the past also, and uh, applying the new hardware, new technology that exists now, and going beyond what deep learning is doing. Uh, we're also patenting a lot of the technology, so we can't really say too much about it, but uh, effectively um, looking at, you know, creative ways of going beyond what the current deep learning data intensive um, approaches uh, lie. And effectively, a lot of the problem right now is that you need a lot of data to train deep learning models. So one of the things that we're looking at is to how to reduce the amount of data that you need. And this is an exciting, uh, exciting area of research that we're working on. Uh, is the output of an explainable uh, AI um, a textual explanation or you envision different ways that the reasoning can be represented for the user to understand? Well, there is a lot of research done by DARPA on this. DARPA have the explainable AI program, and uh, you can see that it depends on the domain, really. And some domains, text would be the best, and some domains, an image is the best. Mm -hmm. I know if you're looking at an MRI image, for example, an image is probably the best. If you're in a driverless car, probably like a little symbol for the driver is the best explanation. And if you're go going, looking at, for example, a legal document, then a text explanation is the best. So it largely depends on the domain. Uh, what is the stage of your project? Uh, do you have customers yet? Uh, uh, where are you in the roadmap? We're currently focusing more on the on the basic research. So uh, we're filing patents, protecting technology. I mean, we've been I've been as a researcher in AI for the last twenty years. I've been also thinking about some of the ideas for a long, long time, um, and just waiting for the hardware to catch up for an actual implementation. And this is one of the main recurring themes in AI that sometimes the algorithms are there, but the hardware took a long time to actually catch up. The availability of data took a long to catch up. So, you know, I, I can see that this new wave will also be driven by looking at old stuff, fairly old stuff, and, you know, giving it a new coat of paint and a new infusion of new ideas. For example, deep learning itself has been around since the early 90s. And uh, recently it has taken off just because of the availability of faster processors and also more data. And of course, uh, that is uh, what is going to happen once again, because uh, the new, more powerful hardware is going to make uh, AI developers ambitious until they hit the limits uh, yes. of, of that hardware. Yes. Uh, are you planning uh, your company to uh, provide vertical solutions to enterprises or consumers, or you uh, may become a platform for developers to build upon? Our strategy is more to become a platform and to provide the core technology in collaboration with partners. So uh, there are too many verticals that will apply. So uh, the idea is to collaborate with different partners, do proof of concept, you know, but that is something that will come later on. Uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, you aim to be able to reduce the use of uh, big data, smaller sets of data. Uh, another uh, trend uh, these days is uh, for uh, AI to be embedded in the devices themselves at the edges of networks. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that your technology will be embeddable as well or it will need to be living uh, in the data centers? Well, I believe a lot strongly on this that AI should be running everywhere. Um, I'm not a very big fan of uh, AI that needs to constantly be online and, you know, have a big data center in order for it to work. Uh, I mean, and there needs to be like some failure mode at least, maybe with limited capabilities where the AI will be able to work. So definitely, yeah, we're working on solving that problem and we're getting there quite quickly.
We are under the illusion that humans are good at explaining themselves, but this is uh, only true in a limited number of cases. Uh, if you ask uh, somebody who just had an accident because they were uh, uh, driving under the influence mm -hmm. and you ask them, why did you do that? Their first answer will be, I have no idea. I was stupid, I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. So your AI will be superhuman out of the box. I wouldn't say superhuman, but it will be able to articulate precisely why a certain accident, for example, a driver's car has happened. So uh, I think the availability of a good quality explanation may not be superhuman, but it will make, you know, it will go a long way towards people understanding the why, why the AI is thinking in a particular way. It's not thinking, but it's behaving in a particular way. And I think this will help a lot in people understanding AI, trusting it, and also incorporating it into normal society because if you have something that just behaves and uh, doesn't tell you how it's actually thinking or you don't understand the behavior you're either not going to trust it or worse you're going to abdicate your uh, responsibilities towards it and you don't know how it's actually working how it's actually doing things and this i think would be a big mistake to to do this blindly and blindly following the advice of the ai because it will lead to a backlash when if inevitably ai will make mistakes and you don't understand them then you know people will start making up explanations for something that they do not really understand so i think understanding the way that the ai works is vital for ai to be incorporated for example in regulated industries and in industries that will impact human lives and i think it's vital um, that that this will be part of the future ai so uh, I don't think that you expect your AI to be able to explain everything all the time. So uh, you must uh, be already thinking of how the trust that you are building and the responsibility that comes with it needs to be managed on the edge cases where your approach will have to wave the, the white flag, give up and say, sorry, I actually can't explain it. So how are you going to handle uh, that responsibility and uh, manage it correctly? I think that the way to manage it is to make sure that people at the end are in control. I think this is the way that when you have an edge case and the AI cannot explain itself, this is where humans should be involved and actually, you know, checking the, the results and be able to have a dialogue with the AI, be collaborative with the AI. And I think this is why the future AI will have explainability inbuilt into it, because this is the way that you get that two-way dialogue between people and the AI. If there is something that is wrong or the AI just cannot explain itself, it can ask a human for help. It can ask a human to give it more training examples, for example, this kind of stuff, which will enable a new way of doing AI. More in line with, for example, what Gary Marcus says is the understanding, AI that actually understands rather than just as a glorified statistical machine, which right now at the moment it is. Generative adversarial networks are uh, letting us understand how uh, different AI systems can uh, collaborate in order to produce uh, better results than each of them could individually. Um, are you planning uh, the output of your explanations to be the input of other AI systems that can improve as a consequence? Yes, we do see that, uh, you know, I mean, once you have explanation, anything can be improved with the help of a good explanation. So just in real life with people, when, they, when someone is able to explain themselves, you prefer to actually um, be with that person and talk to that person and utilize their services. And the same we envisage will be with explainable AI. Obviously, you can't really foretell the future completely and or there will always be unintended consequences, but we do see that the explanations will be embedded absolutely everywhere. And apart from people, I guess AI itself can also benefit from having explanations from other systems. So you can uh, imagine, you know, like a system that connects to other um, systems that explain themselves and, you know, be able to do something useful with that. Often the answers we get are unsatisfactory, but we don't realize that the fault is with us because we didn't ask the right questions. How can we avoid that with your system so that explainable AI provides us uh, with the tools that allow us to ask the right questions in that particular moment. I think good explanations help 
you know, the person who is actually reading, consuming those explanations, come up with more intelligent questions. And I think this is obviously one of the signs that someone has understood something properly, is that they ask relevant questions. And I can see, you know, like the coupling with the explanations and maybe with question answering that will then point you to, you know, related questions. So I think there will be a new wave of improvement um, similar to deep learning that will be based on explanations. Uh, so what are the next steps for your projects uh, that uh, uh, you are looking forward to be able to complete? Uh, in, in, the, in the few months uh, yes. ahead of us? Well, at the moment, we're, you know, in like this uh, stealth startup mode. So I'm looking forward that maybe, you know, sometime next year, near the end of quarter to next year, we'll be able to uh, tell the world, you know, talk to the world and uh, show what we're actually doing and demonstrate it. And I think it will be a mind blowing experience. But I remind you that we are on camera. So I hope that anything you said is not too secret. It's not but I'm that. looking forward to be uh, sitting with you again uh, in the spring maybe, yes. and then be able to go into more concrete examples and explain how explainable AI will benefit uh, the world and the industry uh, all over. Thank you very much, it will be a good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us. You're welcome.